Well, good morning to all you good people at Warrington and Wetley Rocks and maybe some join us from further afield too. Great to be here, wherever here is. I've kind of been moving around a little bit and enjoyed some days out, so I should have asked Adrian's permission to be here at Trenton, but anyway, let's go somewhere else. Well, we've got a few notices, important notices for our, our on-site services. Our online services will probably stay the same. Our on-site services at St John's are staying the same. So next week, because it's the first Sunday of the month, we'll have an eight o'clock service at a BCP Holy Communion service at St John's and then an 11 o'clock service of Holy Communion at St John's. But at St Philip's, we're changing the times. So everything's going to be earlier. So it will be 8.30 for the Holy Communion on Sunday at St Philip's, followed by a main service at 10 o'clock, which will be sometimes Holy Communion, and it will be this week. So that's the main thing. Services at St Philip's are shifting a bit earlier to 8.30 and 10 o'clock. And that's really to allow me to get between both churches and on occasion I might have to take both services so that just about gives me the chance to arrive in a fluster at 11 o'clock at St John's and still take a service there. The Lord be with you. God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
comes from you, maker of heaven, creator of the I am reading from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered round him while he was by the lake. And one of the synagogue rulers, named Jairus, came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman who was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realised that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Now the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher any more? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James and John the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion of people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kuhn, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So it's not really been a summer for going very far. Yet again, we're thwarted by this virus. But here we are in the United Kingdom and you know, it's rather beautiful. There's so many wonderful things to go and see and do. So I've never really been one for traveling beyond our shores very much. We've got such a, a wonderful land that we live in anyway. Well, this last few weeks, been able to get out and about a bit more, had days here and there. So Trentham Gardens is particularly fantastic. But also in our own parish, we've got all sorts of wonderful things like console nature reserve 
and of course the railway runs through that the Chernock Valley Railway a little steam train called Hotspur and that runs just down the road from Wetley Rocks and runs through our parish now many vicars are kind of obsessed by railways and engines like the Reverend Audrey who created Thomas the Tank Engine I loved those stories as I was a child I was really pleased to be able to work on a video game sometime after that but it was all diesels when I was growing up although my earliest memories of that was looking in the cab and seeing the, the driver holding onto this handle thing and I think maybe my granddad told me it's the dead man's handle so if anything happens to the driver like some serious medical emergency well he just falls asleep well he's going to have to leave go of the handle and the train automatically stops the passengers are saved but what about if you didn't have that? Well, runaway trains have been used for all sorts of purposes, including ethical dilemmas. I used to do these with my air cadets. What you do is you come up with an unlikely scenario involving a runaway train and saying, well, what would you do? You need plenty of dramatic jeopardy to make it interesting. So you come up with something like, let's say, there's a runaway freight train that can't stop for some reason. And you're just at the side of the track and you've got a lever and the lever throws the points or not that is it diverts the train now do you want to divert the train or not if you don't divert the train it's going to plow on and this freight train is going to hit a passenger train which is stopped at the station with horrible consequences but if you do pull the lever it diverts the train to another track now on that track there's no trains but there is just a workman working on the track he's probably going to get killed by the train so what do you do do you throw the lever or not do you allow the train to run into the passenger train and kill lots of people or do you sacrifice that one workman is it his life against the others you just say not to do nothing to do with me i'm going to leave it alone and allow the big train wreck what if that workman is a member of your own family your own father or son does that make a difference to how you choose in that situation should it in today's bible reading jesus is in a situation like that he's been asked to save a little girl from dying but he gets interrupted by a woman who needs healing so what does he do does he ignore the woman and go and save the girl or does he stop to heal this woman and hope the girl's still alive when he gets there well the story starts with jairus a good jew a synagogue leader sort of a vicar in those days he falls at Jesus' feet and begs him. Well, he's going to try anything because his little girl is about to die. He's even going to be willing to give up his job and his career, which he probably would be doing by kneeling in front of Jesus. But he wants to save his girl, of course. But before Jesus gets to his, his girl, Jesus comes across a woman with this terrible ailment, which basically makes her unclean and an outcast for society. And she comes to Jesus and she needs him too. A logical thing to do is to, I guess, ignore the woman for the moment, go save the girl and come back and hopefully the woman's still around. She's already suffered for 12 years, so what's another couple of hours going to make any difference? But Jesus doesn't do that. He deals with this woman first, the one that's right with him, in front of him or around him. And he hears the news, the worst news you could possibly want to hear. The little girl's died. It's too late. There must be a vast emotional shock in that and just say, oh, you're too late. You could have done something and you didn't. If you only hadn't got distracted and you behaved logically and done the sensible thing. But then it's Jesus. So he goes to the little girl anyway. And he arrives there and the crowds laugh at him. They couldn't believe what he was saying. He's saying the girl's not dead, she's just asleep. Well, of course the crowds laugh at him they're just being sensible of course this girl who's died she's died they know that they're not stupid but then of course it's jesus so the story has a happy ending and he brings the girl back even from death even when you thought it was too late it wasn't because it's jesus with god it's never a chance of choosing one or the other god chooses both he's not resource limited as we humans are to God it makes no difference whether he makes one planet or a trillion galaxies it's, it's all the same to him he's not limited in space and time like we are but he's concerned with every single one of us 
Now, the disciples in this story, it's always good to put yourself in the place of the disciples. They're just being practical. They say to Jesus, you can't single out one woman from the crowd. But Jesus says, yes, I can. And that's what the parable of the lost sheep is about too. The least, the most insignificant individual is still important to Jesus. This woman who has this bleeding, she'd been an outcast in society. She'd have made anybody around her that touched her unclean. So she transfers this to Jesus, but he doesn't react in the way that the crowd would expect. She was the lowest of the low in that society. Jairus, the synagogue leader, well, because of the importance of religion in those days, he would have a very high place in society. So Jesus abandons this wealthy, well-off man's daughter for the moment to tend to this poor woman, the woman who reaches out to him first. So he gives her the healing first. He doesn't ignore her, that's the thing. This girl of 12 years, well, she'd be expected to work, be getting ready to be married. So that would be a, a bad time in her life to lose her, if, as if there was a good time. So Jairus comes to Jesus and he pleads with him. This woman comes to Jesus and she has a need. Jesus doesn't choose one or the other. His answer is always the both. In fact, the only person he's not minded to save is himself. Ultimately, it's about Jesus being the one who is sacrificed. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He's the saviour of the world. Only Jesus knows the outcomes for both the woman and the girl. We can't second guess him. So what if we do face an impossible ethical dilemma? Well, we can ask what would Jesus do? It's always good to ask, but it's often difficult to answer. Well, the answer is always to trust him. Would Jesus change the points on that railway line? Well, somehow you find a way of saving both the workman and the passenger train. His influence is greater than life or death. And he doesn't see it as life or death. Jesus only deals in life and life situations. You need to remember that, and not just in the good times, but especially the most difficult times, that Jesus is the only one who can bring hope into the impossible situations of life hope that's greater than death because his healing goes beyond this world. Jesus' plans for us aren't just limited to this world, they go beyond that. That's always a difficult thing to get our heads around. Then one day after we've died, Jesus will say to each one of us, Talitha kum, little girl get up or little boy get up. He loves his children that much that he promises to bring us back to life even when we've died. That's an amazing thing. Jesus is the God of the impossible, the one who does things not just in this world but in the next. No wonder things in this world seem so difficult for us to work out what we should do, how we should behave. Ultimately it's just about trusting in Jesus and going to him for your help. This morning we're going to use our five senses, our ears, our mouth, nose, eyes and hands. Have you ever heard something amazing? Lord, thank you that we hear so many amazing things. The music that we can praise you with, the sounds of nature. Thank you for all those who teach us of your love and life. And help us to close our ears to the things that tempt us and would harm us. And help us to hear your voice to guide us as we go through each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have you ever tasted something wonderful? Lord, thank you that we can use our mouths to eat and drink, to help nourish our bodies. And we lift all those who today will have no food to eat or decent water to drink. Be with all the aid agencies who help support those in need. 
and we give thanks for the food banks in our own uh, city and towns. Thank you for the gift of speech. Help us to always speak with love rather than with hurtful words and give us courage to go out and tell our friends and family of your amazing love. We do think of this time, Lord, where, as wearing face masks, we think of those who can't hear and that the wearing of face masks hinders communication. We just bring those people to you. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Have you ever smelt something wonderful, something delicious? Lord, thank you for our sense of smell, to enable us to smell the flowers and so many other good things. And we thank you that we can breathe the air around us. We pray for those in war zones and countries where the air is poisonous and they always have to wear face masks. We think of the world as now through this virus that we have to wear face masks at the moment and the difficulties that that causes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have you ever seen something beautiful? Thank you for the gift of sight where we can see your wonderful creation or family and friends. But there are so many people who have sight problems and we thank you Lord for all the doctors as they try to give people their sight again. Lord open our eyes to see the good in people Help us to see the tears of those who are sad or lonely or afraid and show us how we can love and support them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have you ever felt or touched something that's just wonderful? Lord, thank you for the gift of our hands to do your work. Thank you that we can use our hands to write and play and create. Help us to use this gift to help others, our neighbours, our friends. And during this time with this virus, as we can't touch or hug each other, we just pray for a time when we can do that. So we ask, Lord, that you put your arms around us and hold us and let us know that we are loved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And thank you, Father, for all the good things we can see, hear, touch, taste and smell. Thank you for our wonderful world. And thank you that you have created each one of us in your own image. Help us to value and love ourselves just as you do. Father, in your mercy, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. A collect for the fourth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, you search us and know us. May we rely on you in strength and rest on you in weakness now and in all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.